Welcome to Bullo Hill. This layout represents an industrial scene in Gloucestershire, England in the early 1920s, served by the Midland Railway. The first train movement will be the arrival of a mixed goods bringing produce to the area, the principal product being coal from the Forest of Dean Mines for transshipment into canal barges. Now that the line is clear again, we will see the arrival of a rail bus bringing dock workers to the area. The next train movement will be the departure of a mixed goods train of mainly empty wagons that has been waiting for the road to become clear for some time. Before the whole area is tied up with the shunting of the recently arrived mixed goods, a short pickup goods will arrive, consisting of wagons to be unloaded at the platform especially for this purpose. This train will already have picked up wagons from the top yard at the other end of the layout. The next train will be the departure of the rail bus that will be taking mainly night ship workers home. The short pickup goods that recently arrived now needs to be dealt with. The mineral wagon on one end needs to discharge its contents into a barge parked in the river on the front of the layout. Once unloading of these fuel wagons is complete and all of them coupled up again, this pickup goods will be ready to pass to pick up fresh products.
the wagons of the recently arrived mixed goods need to be shunted into their assigned assignments and the wagons for the next outgoing goods assembled. Using the yard's resident shunting engine, the first thing to do is to take the brake band off the arrived goods and shunt it into the yard's goods departure line. Before the next piece of shunting is carried out, the lifting bridge must be raised to allow the larger boat strings. Then, the next thing to do, using a chain, is to remove the loaded meat wagon from empty cattle wagon out of the other side siding. Again, using the channel is to remove any back and to the back and side of the ship. The next task of the shunting loco, now that it has cleared the yard, is to deal with the wagons of the goods arrival, assigning them to their appropriate sidings. The first of these will be the two wagons on the end of the train. These two will be pulled out together and shunted into the goods yard.
The next thing for the shunting engine to do is to collect the loaded coal rounds. The first two coal rounds will need to be loaded into the steam barge, but almost under the lifting bridge. Unloading is carried out by tipping up the whole length of the track so that the minerals can be ejected out of the end doors of the wagon. The third coal wagon needs to be loaded into the sailing barge. To do this, the wagon needs to be put on the wagon turntable, turned through 90 degrees so that its opening end doors are facing the barge, and then one end of the wagon is lifted up by a crane. The final piece of shunting is to collect all three empty coal wagons and then the shunting engine must run around to the other end of the field for shunting the into the upper end train in the bridge to the This lab is built to a system known as O gauge or a scale of 7 millimeters to the foot. How it came about is, as we know, the only problem of one of the model railway pioneers, the English method can be really.
the loco that brought in the mixed goods train can now be released from duty and taken to the shed after turning. The loco is a fully scratch built model, including wheels, of a Midland Railway 064 tank that, because of their shape, were known as flat irons. The chassis of this model is a highly complex arrangement of two split polarity compensated bogies, enabling it to traverse sharp curves with little rear end overhang. Also, with all 10 wheels picking up current through their axles, it is a very reliable runner. In addition to this layout being principally a goods yard, it does include a small loco servicing area for engines that terminate in other parts of the town. The next train in this morning's operation will in fact be the arrival of a light engine. The light engine that arrived a short while ago will now have to be turned and after turning make its way to the loco shed for maintenance. The loco we see being turned is a prize winning super detailed fully scratch built model of a Midland 422 single. The model is fully compensated throughout on split polarity chassis with the motor and the tender so that full inside working motion and valve gear can be included. This particular member of the class was the one that was shown at the Paris exhibition of 1889 where it took out the grand prize. The high degree of finish coupled with an elaborate lining is therefore fully authentic. Interest now turns to the other end of the loud, where a hopper wagon of low grade or small grade is being loaded into another barge in the river. These hopper wagons have drop doors that discharge the contents from the river, and because of this, the wagon needs to be pushed up a ramp so as to discharge their contents from a higher level. This wagon will have been dropped off from the previous train and would have been waiting for suitable motive power to become available to shunt it up the ramp.